join us on Patreon, and become part of our journey to uncover history's untold stories. Your support helps us create in-depth content, bring hidden narratives to life, and keep history alive for everyone. In the quiet corners of American scientific history, there are stories so profound and so transformative that it becomes almost unbelievable how easily they slip through the cracks of national memory. Some of these stories belong to men and women whose brilliance reshaped the modern world, yet whose names never found a place in school books, newspaper headlines, or the grand halls of fame. Among these forgotten pioneers stand a man whose mind operated where chemistry met imagination, where nature and technology fused into something new, something revolutionary. His name was Dr. Walter Lincoln Hawkins, and for decades, the world unknowingly lived inside the possibilities he created. He was the black chemist whose innovations laid the foundation for biodegradable plastics long before the world realized it needed them, and whose achievements were quietly overshadowed by a society uneager to acknowledge the depth of his genius. The story begins in the early 20th century, a time when America was quickly industrializing, but still deeply segregated. Black children often had to fight for the right to an education, and black scientists had to fight for the right to exist inside laboratories. Yet in Washington, D.C., born in 1911, a young Walter Hawkins developed an early fascination with how things worked. He spent hours dismantling household items, studying wires, metals, and chemical reactions as though decoding the quiet language of the universe. What separated him from others was not simply curiosity, but a mind capable of connecting ideas that had never belonged together. His future teachers didn't immediately know they were looking at one of the greatest scientific intellects of the century, but they sensed something extraordinary. When Hawkins entered Howard University, one of the few spaces where black excellence in academia was not only accepted but nurtured, he began to study chemistry with a kind of focus that left an impression on every professor he encountered. Howard gave him more than knowledge. It gave him the room to imagine, to test, and to challenge scientific norms. After completing his undergraduate work, he pushed further, earning a master's degree in chemistry from Howard at a time when the number of black students in advanced scientific study in the United States could be counted on one hand. But Hawkins wanted more, and he knew that the frontier of scientific innovation lay in the expanding world of polymer chemistry. This ambition led him to McGill University in Canada, a space where racial barriers were fewer and research environments more open to diverse thinkers. There, Hawkins earned his Ph.D. in chemistry in 1938, completing work so advanced that it caught the attention of the American scientific establishment. His research on the stability of polymers placed him at the edge of a field that was about to reshape the modern world. Plastics were the future. But plastics also carried problems no one yet understood. After his doctorate, Hawkins returned to the United States and joined Bell Telephone Laboratories in 1942, becoming one of the first black scientists ever hired by the world-renowned research institution. Bell Labs was the birthplace of many major 20th century inventions from the transistor to satellites. It was a place where chemistry, physics, mathematics, and engineering collided to create the technologies that would frame the future. Yet Hawkins' presence there was unusual, not because of his abilities, but because a black chemist had to be undeniably exceptional just to be given a seat at the table. Even then, he walked into rooms where he was doubted before he even spoke. The young chemist soon immersed himself in the study of plastics. At the time, telephone cables were insulated with materials that broke down quickly when exposed to sunlight, oxygen, and fluctuating temperatures. In many rural areas across the United States, Cables would decay within months, making telephone access unreliable and expensive to maintain. As Hawkins dug into the problem, he realized that the issue was bigger than telecommunications. Plastics were accumulating everywhere. They were powerful materials, light and durable, but they broke down into toxic fragments, and no one knew how to stop or reverse this degradation. In the early 1940s, the world was unknowingly stepping into the modern plastic crisis. Hawkins became one of the first scientists to confront the environmental weakness of plastic itself. He understood that plastics either degraded too quickly, turning brittle and unusable, or lasted too long, resisting natural decomposition. Both extremes pose challenges. What the world needed, though few realized it then, was a plastic that could endure when necessary but return harmlessly to the environment when its purpose was complete. 
Hawkins began pioneering research on stabilizing and destabilizing polymers, the very foundation of what would later become biodegradable plastics. Working with fellow chemist Victor Lanza, Hawkins developed a polymer additive known as stabilized polyethylene, a formula that protected plastic insulation from sunlight and oxidation. This breakthrough extended the lifespan of plastic insulated cables from a few months to more than 70 years, slashing maintenance costs and expanding reliable telephone service to millions of people around the world. But Hawkins did not stop there. His research into polymer stabilization opened up an entirely new field of chemistry, how to control the lifespan of plastics. In the late 1940s and early 1950s, Hawkins began studying natural decomposition processes, how sunlight, microbes, and oxygen reacted with synthetic materials. His findings suggested that plastics could be engineered with predictable life cycles, designed to break down under specific natural conditions. This was decades before the world would speak of environmentalism, climate change, or biodegradable consumer products. Hawkins saw the problem before the public saw it. He imagined solutions long before global industries confronted the crisis they helped create. But the tragedy of Hawkins' career mirrors the tragedy of so many black inventors of his era. His biodegradable polymer research, although groundbreaking, was rarely credited directly to him. Because Bell Labs controlled the patents and the publicity, Hawkins' contributions were often presented as institutional achievements rather than personal ones. In scientific circles, scholars knew his name. But in the broader historical narrative, Hawkins was quietly folded into the shadows. The world praised the progress of plastics without acknowledging that one of the men shaping that progress was a black chemist whose work was revolutionary. The pattern was familiar. The mid-20th century scientific world celebrated certain narratives but not others. A black man pioneering polymer chemistry was not the story America of the 1950s wanted to elevate. His innovations fit into the national progress story, but he, as a black scientist, did not fit the image America wanted to project. It became easier for institutions to highlight the invention while minimizing the inventor. And so, when the early frameworks of biodegradable plastics emerged from polymer stabilization research, Hawkins' contributions were absorbed into the general scientific record, detached from his identity. Even as industrial chemistry advanced in the 1960s and 1970s, Many of the emerging biodegradable plastic technologies were built upon his foundational discoveries. Manufacturers often cited earlier Bell Labs research without acknowledging the scientists behind it. Reports described the evolution of controlled polymer degradation. They discussed the development of photodegradable polyethylene, oxidation-controlled plastics, and microbe-responsive materials. Yet rarely did they mention that a black chemist had initiated the research direction decades earlier. Hawkins, however, was not quietly forgotten by those who worked with him. Within Bell Labs, he became a legend. His colleagues admired his brilliance, his patience, and his visionary approach to science. He became the first black person elected to the National Academy of Engineering. He advised the United Nations on scientific policy. He mentored a generation of minority scientists, ensuring that the barriers he had faced would not define the journey for others. Outside of the laboratory, he advocated for science education for underrepresented communities, understanding that the brilliance he possessed was not unique. Only the opportunity had been rare. By the time Hawkins retired from Bell Labs in 1977, his contributions had transformed polymer chemistry. His research had made global telecommunications possible, helped pave the way for eco-conscious materials, and advanced the understanding of how plastics interact with the natural world. Yet despite these enormous contributions, his name remained largely unknown to the public. Popular accounts of plastic history mentioned companies, laboratories, and patents, but rarely Hawkins himself. Part of the obscurity came from the nature of institutional science. When patents were issued under a company, the public assumed the company innovated, not the individual scientists behind the walls. But part of it was racial. Black inventors throughout American history faced the same erasure, Elijah McCoy in lubrication systems, Louis Latimer in electrical engineering, Alice Parker in gas heating design, and countless others. Their inventions survived. Their names often did not. With Hawkins, the oversight becomes even more poignant because the modern world is now obsessed with the very problem he tried to solve. 
Plastic pollution has become one of the defining environmental crises of the 21st century. Oceans are choking. Landfills are overflowing. Microplastics are being discovered in the bloodstream of humans and animals alike. Governments and corporations scramble to develop sustainable alternatives, biodegradable solutions, and polymer innovations that are in harmony with nature. Yet decades ago, before such concerns were mainstream, Hawkins laid the groundwork for those innovations. If Hawkins had been widely recognized in his time, the global push for biodegradable materials might have arrived sooner. His research suggested pathways for plastic that decayed naturally under sunlight or under microbial action. His experiments demonstrated how chemical additives could control both the strength and the lifespan of polymer-based materials. The world could have adopted biodegradable principles earlier, perhaps preventing part of the ecological disaster the 21st century now faces. The rediscovery of Hawkins' legacy has become a mission for historians of science who, through archival research, patents, Bell Labs records, and interviews with former colleagues, have pieced together the quiet truth of his influence. They have found the connective tissue between Hawkins' early polymer stabilization work and later breakthroughs in degradable plastics. They have reconstructed the story of a scientist whose intellect shaped modern material science more deeply than almost anyone realized. Walter Lincoln Hawkins passed away in 1992, but the timeline of his innovations continues to ripple outward. Today, when biodegradable plastics appear in packaging, medical devices, agricultural films, and consumer goods, they quietly echo his early vision. His name rarely appears in the marketing materials or scientific summaries, yet the principles are unmistakable. His work lives inside every piece of degradable polymer technology that carries the DNA of controlled lifespan chemistry. It is a reminder that history is not merely the story of what was invented. It is also the story of who was silenced. Hawkins' brilliance was not hidden because it lacked merit. It was hidden because the world struggled to accept the full reality of who built modern science. Bringing his story back into the light becomes an act of historical justice. It allows us to acknowledge not only the scientific accomplishment, but the human journey that made it possible. His life teaches us that innovation does not belong to the powerful or the privileged. It belongs to the curious, to the persistent, to the minds that can see beyond what is into what could be. Hawkins saw a world where materials cooperated with nature rather than defied it. He imagined plastics that worked with sunlight rather than crumbled under it, that decomposed gracefully rather than accumulated endlessly. His ideas were ahead of his time, but the time has finally come when the world recognizes their value. Today, environmental scientists and polymer chemists speak urgently about the need for biodegradable alternatives. The world spends billions searching for solutions Hawkins began developing generations earlier. And now that his story has resurfaced, we are reminded of how many breakthroughs in history were born from minds the world tried not to see. Walter Lincoln Hawkins was not just a pioneer. He was a warning about how easily genius can be buried and how much humanity loses each time it allows such erasure. To tell his story is to restore a chapter of scientific history that should never have disappeared. It is to acknowledge that the future of sustainability began in the hands of a black chemist in a segregated America, working in a laboratory that would not fully celebrate him, shaping a world that would one day desperately need the vision that he carried. His legacy is clear now. They hit the black chemist who created the early foundations of biodegradable plastic. But history has finally found him.